Hey there, Tyler, Theater Design Company. Happy Memorial Day. Going to do an update today on our uh, old demo room. So we're just going to kind of combine all the videos together, remove the trailers, and you can just skip through the chapters if there's something that catches your interest. Probably a video more for uh, new users, uh, people that have just found the channel. If you're an existing user, you know that we're actually rebuilding this demo room. Uh, we're full full steam ahead on that project, just delayed on different uh, aspects of it due, just due to our normal work schedule, um, jobs in L.A., Napa, um, up north here in the Seattle area, just keeping us away from uh, building our own demo room. And that's just how it goes when you own a company and you build the stuff out. So anyway, we'll have some updates on that uh, demo room coming up shortly. But for now, just going to do a recap video, kind of take all 10 videos and combine it into one. So thanks a lot. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We do have a bunch of new channel uh, content coming up. Thanks a lot. This will be basically episode one, which is just going to be an overview of what we're putting in this room and give you an idea of what is going to happen on upcoming episodes. So basically, this is our introduction and equipment episode. We'll go over what we're putting in this room, uh, fabric, stone, the theater seats, and of course, equipment and equipment racks. Uh, episode two, we're hoping to work on the hush box and the wiring, um, and we may actually do that this weekend as well and drop a video on Sunday night. Uh, episode three, we're going to go over our Guilford and Main fabric choices and fabric track, along with a couple time-lapse videos of installing fabric. Episode four, going to go over the equipment racks. So this room has three equipment racks. The room itself is utilizing about one and a half racks. The other one and a half rack is for network gear and home audio systems, uh, lighting control, uh, cameras and such. And then episode five, we'll go over lighting control. This room sits at seven zones of lighting right now, and it may end up with a total of eight or nine. It depends if we can backlight the screen. Uh, we have a sample coming from... Uh, see more screens on our neo acoustical material to see how backlighting will work episode six going to go over the star ceiling uh, again we'll do a time lapse and uh, go over the parts it takes to do a star ceiling episode seven going to go over the speaker system so we already have videos you can watch on the clips bts and a lot of the speakers in this room uh, but this will be an overview of all of the speakers uh, installed with images um, try to do a sound clip, not sure how that'll work. And then episode eight, since we'll be getting close to wrapping up the room, we'll go with our Seymour screen, uh, screen surround and fabric. And then the last video will be episode nine, and that will be calibration of the room. We're hoping to get audio control to actually come out to our demo room and uh, give us an in kind of an in home, um, in store calibration setup with our audio control XR7. We'll go over the RTI remote control and some of its functions. And then not shown is we'll do a, a final episode 10 that will go over this complete demo room as well as our sim racing room. It will go over our office, which has Lutron lighting and speakers. It'll go over the equipment room and most likely we will carry that over into the bar and meeting room and our car area and car collection. Um, so that'll do it for now. I will talk about a few other things on this video as we go through some of the equipment and intro on what we're doing on this room. Thanks a lot and stay tuned for more stuff. Okay, so now that you've subscribed, let's go over a few details of this room and then we'll get to the equipment specs on it last and then we'll uh, end the video there. So as you can see with the rendering, there's a few unique details on this room. It's a, a rather short room um, at 18 and a half feet, and the width is 10 feet. Ceiling height is 8 feet, standard ceiling height. And a couple unique features. This room has architectural stone columns from El Dorado Stone. Those, are, uh, those columns are all wrapped currently, but the overgrouting process is not done. And then the second feature you'll probably see in here, besides the star ceiling, is the uh, LED lighting. So around the room, it's gonna have walnut trim with flushed in LED lighting. And then last, you'll probably note the travertine floors, which we get a little bit of flack on. Uh, we gotta keep, keep in mind that this is also a working space. So this goes between uh, one area of a garage, through a bar, and then into our demo uh, area for meetings and sim racing room into a workshop. So having carpet's just not a possibility. We will have some runners from Joy Carpet 
that will help with sound. And you got to keep in mind, most theaters in the residential world, they never properly treat them anyway. So you've got a big hard ceiling on it and carpet. We're essentially doing the opposite where our hard surface areas on the ground will have carpet runners. And then we have uh, just a little bit of a drywall soffit and then a giant star ceiling in the center that's acoustical material and fabric. So I think we've solved our solutions there pretty well. The next thing on this one that we're going to change is you can see the layout on the room. It's uh, technically three rows. You've got a row of fortress seating on the front, which is really just for aesthetics. It's absolutely too, too close to the screen for day-to-day -day viewing. The second row is the sweet spot and what we've set up all the audio and acoustics for. And then the last row is a basically a 42-inch bar pub type table with two bar stools. Um, other things to note on here, you'll see the walnut wood door. You'll see the flushed in hush box um, that we'll do a video on next. Again, the star ceiling. And then you'll see the jungle book picture. That's just a rendering that is still being worked on. And we think what it'll end up being is a uh, 50 inch commercial display showing movie posters. I'm going to go to the next rendering, which is just another view. Um, you can see the fabric walls, more of the LED strip lighting. You'll see that we have LED strip lighting flushed into the travertine as well. And then note the uh, soffits have uh, lighting on there. Those are just standard 4-inch halo cans controlled by a Lutron switch, which will wall wash the fabric. And then last, you can see uh, another view of the room uh, similar to the first rendering. And that shows the Eclipse BTS system. And hopefully we're going to be able to backlight it in that similar approach. Uh, behind the 4k neo material so we have a sample on our way from seymour and we hope that that will uh, allow us to do the lighting we'll be testing that next week uh, next part of this video i'm going to go over just the equipment specs of it and the overall cost of a room like this and then if you wish to check out the other episodes that we'll try to continue doing over the next week weeks and months um, depending on how long it takes to get the room wrapped up um, we appreciate it Okay, so in the last part of the video, kind of wrap it up and give you an overview of what the cost of this demo room cost. Um, obviously, if we're putting this in your home or some of these systems, these prices would change dramatically. Uh, this demo room, as well as our offices and other areas, are in the bottom of a uh, quite old home, um, actually built in 1888. So there's some additional costs here, such as floor leveling, uh, additional framing, you would probably not... Um, have and then depending on the speaker package you may not build a screen wall for the clips and you, you don't do stone columns there's a huge chunk of change written off right off the bat um, acoustical treatments um, on this room vary because we have stretch track so we have five panels and six panels um, so it's on each section of the stretch track as you can see in the rendering so that adds a ton of cost to the the labor, um, but the typical ceiling sound treatment with the star ceiling, uh, you know, front screen wall fabric and the soundboard and some light kinetic noise, uh, both TAD and stealth panels. Those are probably pretty spot on for uh, any type of, uh, you know, higher end theater room. Um, next thing to go over. Oh, the other thing to mention on this is the electrical rough in on this. Um, that number there, about $3,500, includes adding a sub panel, um, getting dedicated circuits over into that room, uh, can lights, and so on. And then the second part of that is, uh, is kind of the higher end stuff, the theater lighting control. Um, we have all Epic Sky uh, LEDs, they're RGBW. We have uh, separate power supplies and enclosures with fans. Um, RTI control system, I'm not actually factoring in the control system part, that's just for the panel app. So add for a, either an XP6 or an XP8, you're going to add 1000 or $2,000 for a control. And the reason we need so much control is all of our lighting, including the Lutron, is all serial controlled so we can get two-way feedback on the uh, Apple iPad. Uh, we have a launch port case and charger for the iPad, so it keeps it nice and safe and charged. And then equipment rundown. I mean, you've got equipment racks, uh, Mid-Atlantic, so all of our items are in custom faceplates and shelves. Uh, another big ticket item there is the Furman IT reference at the bottom of our main equipment rack. Um, that's a big ticket item at $4,400. You got a Sony X1100 Blu-ray, um, TiVo Edge, Apple TV. 
Um, for music, we have the uh, NAD Blue Sound DAC, and then you got your huge stack of audio control, which comes in close to 20 grand. And then this is obviously not needed for uh, nearly anybody's home theater, but we've got Kimber Cable power cords and Kimber Cable XLR cables, which come up at about $5,600 just for that rack. And then this is another item that's pretty close for most homes, speaker wire and low voltage wiring. You know, you're probably $500 to $900 on that. And then last on the room, we've got our clip speaker package. Uh, the, our LCR with our subs comes in at 25 grand. And then our sides, rears, and Atmos speakers uh, come in at close to six grand. Again, we're using a Kimber Cable PM33 and uh, Spade Connections for all our adapters. What you can't see in this picture, or if you haven't followed any of our builds, we have an IMAX subwoofer clone that we kind of built. Um, that goes underneath the uh, Clips BTS package. That's kind of a more of a fun thing, but it's uh, it's basically a humongous enclosure with four 12-inch uh, imminent speakers, and it's the exact uh, speakers and specs of one of the IMAX subwoofers you would hear at a uh, commercial theater. Uh, calibration cost $500. Um, this does have the Dirac, so we probably wouldn't have to charge another customer that. We work through it and. Uh, that would probably be part of our audio control cell or if we're uh, selling another processor. Projection system, we have our cooling, um, 8K cables that just came out from Binary, which is one of our suppliers. The acoustical screen material, which we're trying to backlight, is uh, comes in about $1,800 on a Seymour screen. We're using the uh, XF Theater Extreme Wolf Cinema projector in this room. That comes in at about $23,000. However, you can go projection systems can go anywhere from a uh, you know an Epson 4050 projector at $2,500 is a very nice projector. We also do a lot of the Sony uh, 295s, but then again you can do a $70,000 Barco. It's it's really up to you and how much of a budget you have, how big of an enthusiast you are. And then final touches, uh, our room only has four seats, so we've kind of lucked out on theater seating cost at $6,000. Um, budget figure on a bar table and chairs for the back row, um, which we haven't purchased yet, come in at about $900. Our walnut base trim from a local company was $1,800. And then our current pricing on our Joy Carpet Runners for the left and right of the room, um, underneath the bar table and then in front of the front theater seats is at $1,200. But I have a feeling that's going to go up. And then where we had our Jungle Book movie poster, that's going to get a uh, just a basic Samsung commercial display at $600. And then what's not showing on here is somewhere in the range to install all of this gear, um, terminate all the LED connections, uh, programming, uh, just you name it, install, building, paint. You know, some of those things were factored into the construction. We probably have about forty dollars or $50,000 in a room uh, like this to build it. And uh, again, we do theaters in the range between, we can get you a, a pretty decent theater starting at six or $7,000. We're doing a couple here in the month of February at that price. And you can go up from there. We've got rooms that cost $400,000, $100,000. It's really based on the equipment and uh, your style of the room, what the room's gonna end up being. So hopefully you like all these episodes that are coming up. Subscribe so you can see them all. I'm going to go over each and every little step of the room. Um, the room is probably at 80% built right now. So um, I did do a bunch of time lapse, but they just didn't turn out very good. So anyway, hope you enjoy the videos and subscribe and talk to you soon. Thanks. Hey, this is Tyler with Theater Design Company. Going to work on uh, episode two here. We'll go over uh, two aspects of the demo room. One will be the hush box that holds our projector. Um, it conceals it within the room. And then the second thing we'll go over is some of the wiring and systems that are running this room. And uh, overall, I should have made a couple episodes on the wiring because there's a lot more to it than uh, I had first thought that was going to go in here. Uh, overall, let's go over the hush box. Um, what we've done is, uh, well, basically what a hush box is, is allow a projector to sit within a wall, a soffit, or in our case, a cabinet and uh, keeps the unit quiet and uh, in your case you keep it quiet it's usually going to be in a space that's concealed and you got to keep it cool so what we've done here as you can see in the picture is an inline duct fan from AC Infinity and uh, what we've got is a four inch duct grill on the bottom that can be purchased from AC Infinity runs up through their four inch duct into an inline duct fan 
that inline duck fan is uh, their passive version so it, it does have speed control but it doesn't have their their fancy display um, and then that runs to a Niles low voltage um, triggered outlet and that triggered outlet can either be from the projector um, an AV receiver or in our case it's going to come from the control system so we'll have a uh, macro that turns the theater room on and that will uh, turn that first fan on and that's going to push air um, into a second cavity of our hush box so I'll open that up now and then you can see the top shelf here that's basically giving us um, a suction into the room or we're pushing air into the projector and then on the outlet of this thing you'll see we have a, a cabinet fan from AC Infinity we're running both those fans as a uh, suction so we're pushing the air out into the room and in this case we will use the display so we have the temperature display you can see the inlet below um, if anybody's wondering the black track is LED lighting and you can see we're, we're still doing patching and work on the room but uh, here I'll shut it all over here and you can see it gives a nice clean look within the room and it also gives us a clean look on the other side because you have just the uh, projection system lens coming through okay so for the second part of the video I'm gonna go over some of the wiring of the room uh, mainly the equipment rack and equipment room wiring um, there's a lot of other stuff I wish I would have gone over here you can see me kind of zooming through the uh, audio control rack uh, we've custom made power cables those run down to the uh, Furman IT reference 20 and uh, those are for watt gate connectors it's all 12 gauge wire it's uh, custom built braided wire and then we have our uh, speaker connections so for the LCR and subs we're using uh, PM 33s for the back of the audio control rack we're using S bands those will be uh, soldered and heat shrinked on all connections and then we use a, a Kimber 3 braid wire this is equivalent to their uh, PBJ interconnects and we'll uh, custom solder all those XLR cables to length and we'll zip over here to the equipment room so you can see some 12 gauge wire some of the control wire uh, you can kind of see the layout of our equipment racks so the middle rack there is for house audio and uh, these are our Meanwell uh, transformers um, excuse me power supplies for the uh, low voltage system um, audio control uh, radio raw 2 get an RTI PCM 4 that runs the serial connections to the epic links which are our star ceiling controllers and then you can see this is the panel below so these are our advanced pro controllers from epic sky that runs uh, four of the seven zones of lighting in this room and we may be adding an eighth zone here it looks like and then kind of do a zoom out on the room so you can see we got three equipment racks 37u in spacing um, far left rack is for our network um, server for the uh, business um, some switches um, probably have a couple pieces of source gear in there and then the center rack is for house audio and the right rack is for the AV equipment and we'll obviously go into this more in depth through other videos you can see that this is kind of uh, rough and fast on here there's there's way more wiring and stuff we could have gone over on this room um, I even have some uh, pre-wire images I'll post up on some further videos um, appreciate appreciate you taking a look at this one and uh, I think we'll have a lot more cooler videos and hey this is Tyler theater design company so got a new camera so we're gonna try that out today got a new mic we're gonna try that out today we also got a light for the camera so a bunch of new things going on today and we're gonna try to start this video number three and uh, go over some of the fabric and uh, fabric track system so I've laid out a few of our uh, items we use for the fabric track system uh, first and foremost um, Guilford of Maine fabric so you can see we have just a, a million samples here um, these are all from various projects these laid out are all the samples we tried for this room to get the color right and what we've decided on is uh, this fabric here I'm not sure if I can zoom into it or not um, the fabric itself has a little bit of charcoal hint to it which will match the black on the screen and then we've actually done the ceiling with a similar hue to that color as well so that should blend in well and then the gray uh, the lighter gray or the ash color um, works well with the stone 
And as you can see, the stone is now um, in place here and it's mortared in. And we'll do a time lapse on this wall here. And so we'll time lapse this wall with a uh, doing the fabric track. And we've got to paint between the fabric track and the stone. So there's no way to run the mortar out right to the edge. So we found a paint that is uh, as close as we possibly can get it. And we've even found some walnut shells to give the paint some texture. And so let's jump back here to some of the fabric tracks. So you can see here we're using uh, two different things here. We've got a perimeter um, square edge, and then we've got a perimeter, um, or excuse me, we have a mid wall um, non beveled for the center. And that'll give us an element of five panels and we'll create a seam. And uh, here you can see different uh, bevels. So here's a perimeter beveled edge. And again, I'm getting this camera sorted out with the light, so I apologize, but I think it's going to make a, some better videos when we're done here. So this has a beveled edge. We're obviously doing a square edge, which is this one, so this is a perimeter square. And then on our case, we're doing a mid-wall square. So it's got just a, a nice seam. It gives you about a 16th to an 8th inch seam down the middle, giving it a nice shadow line and effect. And then if you really wanted to get a little more aggressive, here's a mid-wall bevel. See if I can zoom in on that, but it's got a beveled edge. These are uh, test pieces. This is from Kinetic Noise Control. That's our go-to uh, company for fabric track systems. Again, Guilford of Maine Fabric. And then a few of the tools we use for fabric systems. So a couple of tools here. Little edge. And then you need the little scissors to do this. So we get those sharpened a couple times a year. And then a couple of quick things to go over, and then I'll get into doing the uh, time lapse of me doing one fabric wall. Um, here's some of the fabric uh, acoustical panel. So we put these beneath the uh, kinetic noise. So you've got one inch track. Um, it's actually an inch and an eighth, and most of the material we're using is one inch. So we have a TAD diffusion panel. And as you can see on those, those are one inch thick with a hard face with the holes in it. So it's kind of a kind of a mixture of a diffusion and an absor absorption panel. And then we use an off three and six pound uh, insulation board for the rest of our areas. And then you can kind of see just right in here, we've got some uh, kinetic noise stealth diffusers and that's for the back wall here. So we got a four foot by a nearly four foot diffusion panel on the back wall, which is always a nice feature. You'll see a lot of theaters that'll have diffusions. Uh, one other quick note, this grill, this is actually the surround speaker. So I'm going to get some grief for this from the guys that saying this isn't on the same bed layer or however they want to put it. But uh, to be quite honest, the seating is about seven feet from there. And this room has a low ceiling of about seven feet on the back row and eight feet in the front. So your ears will be way better than mine and a lot better than the microphone system using to tune it if you can catch that. So other than that, I'll, uh, I'll end the video here on this part and then we'll get a time lapse and then I'll recap with a few of the uh, favorite products we use from this, Kinetic Noise, Guilford Domain Fabric. And when we order these, these are what we order for customer for swatches. So if you're doing a fabric wall system with us, we end up ordering these. You can see all the colors. And matter of fact, jump into this one here. This is what our front screen wall will be um, it's the Anchorage and uh, we use an Onyx that's midnight and this bag here is the Onyx color which you can also do their deep black color a lot of guys like the uh, Anchorage and the burgundy and then you can get into some textures here which are pretty neat even some metallics and if you want to go plain you've got Anchorage again white these are a lot of typical fabric colors. As you can see, these are all just samples from customers. Even one we thought we might be doing some green, a tweed. So again, tons of colors for all this. Thank you.
Hey, this is Tyler with Theater Design Company. I'm gonna go over the equipment racks today, uh, mainly the front and back wiring and our secondary rack. The third rack is not complete and we'll do it in two stages. I'll do one with the uh, racks pulled out and then I'll do a second um, with the uh, racks pushed into their openings and get a good idea of how they're gonna look when the finished product. Um, this is the back door to the uh, equipment room slash sim car racing room and uh, So here we have our equipment rack. We have uh, three total in this area. First one being the audio control equipment rack, but it has a few more items in here. So top, upper top is a Furman PL8C, which has lights on it. Second piece is our NAD uh, 658 uh, DAC player, also for blue sound. And we're using a Kimber cable out of that balanced and uh, into the CD input on the audio control. Then you have our audio control X7, you can see all the Kimber cable there. That's all PBJ, custom built with Switchcraft connectors. And then as I go down, second amp, uh, well first, second amp are RS1000 subwoofer amps. Those drive the 18 inch clip subs, uh, 1000 watts each. And then as we go down, we have uh, four Avalon G4s. The first one is running our left and center at 600 watts bridged. The second one down runs our right speaker at 600 watt bridge, our left and right surround. The third amp down is running our front wides and our side speakers. And the final amp is running the Atmos speakers, front heights and rear heights. And on the bottom, we have the Furman uh, Reference IT20. And you'll note we have uh, all custom built power cords. So those run to 20 amp dedicated circuit for that. There's another 20 amp dedicated circuit, an additional 20 amp dedicated circuit. All the speaker wire is structured cable product 12-2. And then you'll see we have some data and control wire. All of our connectors off the back of the amplifiers are Kimber Cable S-Band, which are soldered and then heat shrink. And then we have watt gate power cords for each amplifier channel. With a little bit higher end power cord for the X7. And then our NAD has a basic power cord for now, just using a custom link Kimber, uh, excuse me, custom link uh, Mid Atlantic cable. And then as you can see, we don't have any of our HDMI cable plugged in. That we'll put in once we slide the rack in. And a couple other notes here the Furman is actually ran with a 10 2 cable and everything else are 12 2 cables, everything's grounded. And the only thing left to put in here are gonna be our trigger wires. And then I'll sneak over to the other rack here just as a quick shot, it's not wired up yet. But we have our RTI processor, we have our NED Blue Sound, and then for source gears for the theater, Sony ES player, TiVo Edge, and then the shelf there will have Apple TV or a Fire TV and the rest is house audio amplifiers and then the rack off there in the distance is our network rack our server rack we'll have a Clyde Escape Strato in there and then you can kind of see back from behind you can see we have our low voltage lighting power supplies and that will finish this part of it You see the equipment room, that's the center rack that's pulled out. So you can see we have plenty of room. There's a slot for all three equipment racks. Theater racks installed and basically leveled. And we can easily walk in and fully get to our back of our equipment rack for service. But generally it'll be set, there's no reason for us to adjust it. The racks that will be adjusted, and since it is a demo room, will be this center rack where we'll probably swap out source gear and then more of our IT network rack, which we'll use to uh, do testing and things of that sort. And that rack's accessible actually through a door in the shop, so no problem there. And last, I'll slide this other rack in and do a final overview of the equipment area. And then we'll have a final video of this when it's all 100% done and painted. You can see there's switch covers off and the barn doors off, the theater doors not even on, so on and so on. 
Okay, so this is all three racks installed. And as you can see, it's a pretty good fit. We still have paint touch up and some leveling. And the center one again pulls out. Panel on the upper left is running some of the star ceiling and the Lutron. The white panel on the lower left runs all of our Epic Sky lighting controllers. And again, we're gonna start wiring those up today. And then as you can see, we have a Furman PL light on each one. That's Those are usually just for lighting. We have some function for a few of them. The theater is mostly running off the Furman. All the audio control is. The Panamax 20 amp is running most of the amps. And then we have another Panamax 20 amp and a trip light surge running some of the server equipment. We'll zoom out and try to get a light on it. So you can kind of see how it looks lighted up. Turn our light off and see if it looks any better. Test GoPro's complete dark lighting. So I'll go over the equipment rack for the theater, which main reason for this video. So we have our theater design company logo panel. It's a 37U equipment rack. And from top to bottom, Furman PL8 Plus. Again, we're mainly using that for the lights. We have the NAD658, which is our DAC player. Uh, using that for blue sound for music in the theater. We could also run some line in sources for that, um, CD player, uh, turntable, anything else we want. And then we have the Audio Control X7, followed up by two RS1000 subwoofer amps, the four Avalon G4s. Down here at the bottom, we have the reference IT20. And then a couple things to note on the bottom of each rack, we have the Mid Atlantic handles. Most of the plates are brushed. Most of the vents are brushed aluminum. And then I know there's a lot of people on the forums that ask, but we have custom made face plates for some of our equipment that doesn't come rack mount. So those are called A faces for Mid Atlantic. And then I'll do the second rack. Again, another Furman. This one is the DMC, so it's got voltage. So we can just kind of do a test of our voltage on the rack. We have an RTI XP8V. We have two RTI 84Xs that we're only using for preamps. And yes, the face plates will get changed out to match. Then we have the blue, uh, NAD Blue Zone, uh, Blue OS 4 Zone Media Player. This is similar to Sonos or Music Cast. We're trying this out. The old system had four Music Cast players, so we'll see what we end up doing there. We have the Sony ES Blu ray player the TiVo Edge. Below the TiVo Edge, that panel actually removes and will hold an Apple TV 4K or a Amazon Fire, we're not sure yet. Then we have some Vanguard slash DaVinci products, two subwoofer amps, one for house audio, one for outdoor audio. Then we have an eight channel amp for inside, 12 channel amp for inside and outside, and then a two by 125 running some additional outdoor speakers. And then we have a Panamax 20 amp blue bolt device. We have a drawer. And again, we have the shelves. And then the third rack, another Furman. We have that Lona video switcher. That's going to run a bright sign for our bar. It'll also send our camera signal out to various TVs in the house. That opening there is going to be for probably a Kaleidoscape, maybe as a BD uh, player. Arachnus switches. And most of those are going to be running fiber into them and then standard uh, gigabit network out. We have room for additional storage servers, a camera system, and then another Blue Bolt device, trip light uh, power surge protector, battery backup, 
two more drawers, and then again the handles. Again, we're not painted yet. And then if I peek in there, those are the power supplies for the low voltage lighting, uh, Lutron and a few other devices for various items. And then coming back here, I don't know if I open this one up. This one runs the uh, Epic Sky Technologies Commander and Epic Links for the star ceilings. And then we've got our RTI PCM4. We have a Lutron Radio Raw main repeater and bridge. And again, the nice thing about that is they're uh, all tucked away in there. And when they're turned on, they light up pretty cool at night through the plexiglass. And then we have all of our controllers here, which I think I already went through this. But uh, these will be wired up this afternoon and we'll start working on the lighting control video. As you can see, we channel that in, make it look pretty nice. And then that should conclude the video for now. We'll go over and uh, probably going to start working on the video for the lighting control and a few other things this afternoon. We'll give you a... Uh, Episode number five here, give you a tour of the theater on where we stand. We thought we'd be farther along. We had an issue with the fabric. Uh, as you can see, this is the entry of the theater. It's kind of a bookshelf door. Um, still kind of building it out. But this is actually going to be painted gray uh, to match the wall color, let it blend in a little bit. Um, RTI touchscreen that controls the theater, but also the bar audio. A Lutron Pico. And then you can see we still got to finish these here, caulking and sanding. And uh, as you can see, we've got our, our LED light in, all of our can lights are in. And then that's going to be a now showing movie poster. So it's going to have some cut letters backlit on the top that say now showing. You see the uh, plexi and the uh, frosted material for the movie poster. I think we're going to do uh, Bond Skyfall in there. And then all the millwork is uh, cut and glued. And uh, we'll do our finished sand. Everything's going to be stained walnut. go back in here so no works done around the door portal windows going away the film reels going away that's just going to be a, a piece of walnut on top of that um, that's stained or alder that's stained this is all alder and then we're going to do a almost a floor to ceiling door handle door pole you can see the mold in here so we've actually sanded it and cut it and routed it to go around the corner here we do have our lights fringed into our uh um, travertine now those are actually up and running uh, still have to do our star ceiling which I'll, I'll run in there real quick and uh but all, all the mill works cut done um it's all cut to exact size you need some sanding uh, you kind of hit you might be able to see a little bit of a green light it's going to be an exit sign back here we have uh sauce hinges that are flushed in and the door will open in and it's spring loaded so it'll shut and then it's our projector opening and what it has it's going to have a panel that goes over here to cover the rough opening of the projector that'll all be stained wood and it covers the fabric up and then the inside of it is routed which will hold a piece of eighth inch plexi and what we do is once we decide on the final projector we'll cut a hole that's the opening of the projector lens to give that a nice look we've done on a couple jobs now and it's great and you can see the led lights tracked in Clips BTS system. And then last, I'll walk over here real quick. This is uh, it's actually the sim racing room, which is a workshop right now. Office, doing a few things here. Whiteboard goes there on the upper left. And then these are the star ceiling panels. They're... Uh, Cut to size, um, just about ready to go. I'll have those up uh, by the end of next week. And uh, we'll go from there. And then uh, do a video on this room. This is our office slash meeting room. And uh, there is something behind that door. Uh, so it's a secret door. If you can see it, you might be able to see the edges. It's not 100% fastened in. So the theater entrance from the back. And this is what we're calling our lobby. So the equipment. Lighting panels done. That's our shop. Acoustical panels there. And I think we're going to do a concession stand here. And then to get in there, there'll be a barn door to kind of keep that hidden. 
and then sim racing room which is our workshop right now and back into the theater and again it's all alder be stained walnut and uh, walnut trim and then it's still the gray fabric just uh got to adjust these seams we're having an issue with the seams you can see the gaps so when you stretch the fabric it pops in so hope you join the video and the next four videos should give it a should be done and a lot more info on this thing um we've got a video on the star ceiling got a video on all the lighting control we'll have a video on the speaker package and a couple final walkthrough videos thank you have a good day Hey there, this is Tyler with Theater Design Company. I'm going to do an uh, overview on our star ceiling kit for our demo room. Um, basically, be little, three little sections on this video. One, I'm going to do uh, right now, I'm just going to go over the PDFs of the four components that it takes to do the star ceiling um, and shooting star in our case. And then I will do a quick video of us uh, kind of building it with a time lapse and then I'll do a video of us uh, walking through and uh, I'm gonna do my best to try to show what we have in there with the lighting and uh, the camera we have it's extremely hard to get a good uh, indicator of how the star ceiling actually looks um, but I think I've got a pretty good job of doing it uh, so first we're using the uh, epic sky um, and we use epic sky exclusively for our star kits and most of our RGB lighting um, to highlight on this, we're using two of their star modules, each with 256 fibers. Um, the nice thing about it, it's, it's serial controllable, and it actually wires up using Cat5 wire, Cat6 wire. Uh, so we've got uh, Cat6 wire going up to the ceiling to run these. And uh, I'm going to scroll down here. We're basically using the third-party control system um, solution minus the Wi-Fi interface. Um, and again, we have two of these, so we're running the Epic Link out to the star module. And then the second thing we have in here is a shooting star, which just clips over with, a uh, again, another Cat5 wire and third-party control. So you can see that's done. And if anybody's interested, I could give you a full diagram of how we have this wired up. Uh, the second part of the uh, system is we uh, use the insulation board from Knopf. We're using their six pound, which is their more dense stuff, pretty much this one here in the image. Um, and we've cut those to size and then we build a wood frame around these so we can have a nice crisp edge. I know a lot of guys and gals just build this without using it. And it just, if you drop it, you hit the panel too hard, it puts a dent in it and you can see it in the final product. And then last we're using uh, our typical Anchorage Guilford Domain fabric in onyx color. And so those are basically the, the three or slash four elements to this bu building the star ceiling kit. And so what I'll do is I'm going to uh, do a quick time lapse on this. Um, and then you can skip forward to the time lapse. I'll uh, put a video indicator on there when I'm going to actually show the star ceiling kit with a video. And I think that'll do it. Thank you.
Hey there, this is Tyler with Eater Design Company. Um, you've probably watched the time lapse and a little overview of what equipment was used to build the star ceiling. So I'm going to try to do a video on it. It's extremely difficult with the black onyx fabric and being the ceiling is darker, but I think I'll try to do a decent job here. So this opening is 60 inches by 150 inches. So roughly 5 foot by 12 foot. And then we have an inch and a quarter gap to let the RGBW lighting glow up on the star ceiling. You can see the camera's having a hard time even picking up the black. And so what I'll do is I'm going to turn the star ceiling on and then I'll turn the RGBW lighting on to give you the full effect of this feature. Thank you. Okay, so here's the star ceiling on. We've got it set for every 10 seconds for there to be a shooting star. So we should see that any second. There it goes. Trying to get down here and see what we can do for this. There's a shooting star again. I'll try to do it with the lights dimmed down. I don't think it's going to be possible. Not too bad. You can see the shooting star again. So this ceiling here has... 256 LED or excuse me fiber optic points uh, times two so there's literally two exact panels I think that's what 512 fiber optic stars and then the shooting star if I recall is somewhere between a hundred or 150 individual fiber optic points let me see if I can get up on this st shooting star for a close-up Okay, so a little bit different view. So this is with our RGB lighting set to blue. So you can see the shooting star. And then what we try to do, and it's extremely difficult, but we were going for super crisp, sharp lines with our RGBW lighting. So that lighting is actually in a Cluse aluminum channel with a frosted... Um, basically no LED spot, like a spotless diffuser. And then we've added that trim detail to let the RGBW lighting shine on it. And what it's given us is a super crisp, basically LED line. It's, it's color changing, I'll do it. I'll put it in color changing mode so you can see some other stuff happen. But uh, overall, we're extremely pleased with how it looks. Hey, this is Tyler Theater Design Company. Uh, been a while since we've posted. Uh, this should be episode seven. We go over the lighting control in our demo room. And uh, I dig into this pretty deep at about eight minutes to give you an idea of what we have for equipment. Um, so you can see we're much farther along on the demo room. I'd say 95%. The door we just opened is getting changed. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go over a bunch of different aspects of the lighting, uh, give you an idea of what we got. So we'll go over the screen wall that you saw. We'll go over that on uh, our next episode, number eight. And uh, we'll work on also the equipment of the demo room. You probably saw there's a PD uh, layout there. But uh, let's get to some of the lighting. You see I'm turning it on now. So we've got multiple zones of RGBW LED lighting. Uh, we went all 12 volt on here. It's not a huge room. If it was a larger room or had long runs, we'd probably bump that up to the 24 volt version. We've got the uh, star ceiling kit from uh, Epic Star. We built all the panels. We've uh, Frenched in a light here. Uh, lit up the now showing sign. And uh, going to go back to the controller and change a few things. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this in demo mode. Is what, uh, what we're calling it. And uh, we'll jam a little bit of music here and uh, show you what this thing can do as far as the different lighting colors and zones. And then I'll tell you a little bit more about it before we dig into the equipment on it.
that gives you an idea of all the different colors it can do. We're probably only showing a handful of out of the hundreds and hundreds of colors that the RGBW lighting can do. Um, like right here, for example, we've put it in a, basically a bright white mode or RGBWW within the controller settings. And uh, that just basically turns the whole room to white. It'd be a good cleaning mode. And then I'm going to go back here and uh, go on our controller here and uh, just show you a few of the different things it can do. So we turn all the lights off and I'm going to walk to the back of the room and, and go in from our other door here so you can see the effect it does with the lighting. And so this is looking in from the back. You can see the screen, 120 inch Seymour screen. Putting the down lights on. So those are Halo 4 inch cans, 5000 K bulbs. Turn those off. There's star ceiling turns on. RGBW lighting turns on. I go over the different zones uh, in a few minutes here on the video. And then what I'm going to do is show you the advanced controllers, the lights on. So advanced controllers, there's four of them. That gives you your step lighting, cove lighting. And then the other thing we do on these is we uh, we generally do the lights on the Furman. We do Furman pull-out LED lights on uh, most all the equipment racks we use uh, have these. And then last, I'm going to walk down here. I'll show you a little bit close up on the now showing sign. See the perimeter lighting on the bottom. And again, thanks for watching and go over the details on this uh, bunch more in the next couple of minutes here on the video. I really dig into the LED controllers, uh, the lighting control, the KX7 RTI. So again, thanks for watching. Hey there, this is Tyler, Theater Design Company. Gonna go over lighting control system in our demo room. I'm gonna try to do this uh, kind of piece by piece to give you an overview of what it takes to do a lighting control with multiple zones. Uh, to start off, as you saw in the previous part of the video, we have a seven inch touchscreen that we're using for an RGB and lighting controller. So that piece is running off the RTI Advanced Controller. It's an XP8V. Um, they make various different versions, XP6, 8, um, even an XP4, so you don't have to go crazy and do a rack mount. And then that is being controlled um, two different ways. So we have this thinking controlled, pop this open, by the Lutron. So we can go Telnet and go back the opposite way and tell the Lutron to control a few things in the advanced controller. And then what we're also doing is using serial commands from the advanced controller to tell the RTI to do certain things on the main repeater of the Lutron as well as we're doing only serial control to our advanced controllers which are in the box below. So to kind of recap we're using the Lutron system for basic can down lighting and to control various on functions only. So we basically use the Lutron to turn on the power supplies that run our RGB lighting controllers and star ceiling. That way we can have them preset to say we want the whole room to be blue. We set that up within the RTI touchscreen and that will revert back to that same command every time the customer, in our case the demo room, we hit our Lutron Pico switches. Um, so it's a simple uh, but very effective way to uh, control that uh, lighting features without having to pull open a remote control or anything else. Uh, so you got a Lutron Radio Raw 2 main repeater, Lutron Connect, and then PCM4, which is a serial adapter. And those control the two Epic Links, the advanced commanders for something else we're working on, but we've got Epic Link number one, which is running the star ceiling, Epic Link number two, which is using the shooting star. And then we're running a serial command from the XP8 down to our advanced controllers. So we have four advanced controllers. The first one does our cove lighting, second one down does our perimeter lighting and the third one down does the stair lighting the fourth one we're actually using it as a four channel controller and that's controlling our exit sign using channels one 
the now showing sign using channels 2. Channel 3 is for the uh, movie poster, which is backlit. And then channel 4 is a future one that we have some wires prepped if we want to do some uh, seat lighting or something like that. So that's a future. So those are all there. I'm going to uh, try to show you the power supplies. Those are back behind this equipment. Okay, so I apologize for the mess in here, um, but I wanted to give you kind of an insight on how this runs. So the Lutron system itself, we're using 8 amp switches to control the power of these. That's what allows us to revert back to our save settings in the Epic controllers. So the first panel out of three here has Meanwell power supplies, and those are running the star ceiling, the shooting star, and some other control in the uh, theater. The second and third panels down are Meanwell power supplies. Um, they're basically four amp power supplies that are uh, running the controllers. Uh, so you got four controllers. Each box here has two Meanwell power supplies. So you got panel one, two, three. Panel two are holding the power supplies one and two for advanced controllers one and two. And then advanced controllers three and four are powered from our lowest panel. Okay, so I'm back in the lobby here. The only thing I wanted to show you in here otherwise is something we do on a lot of equipment racks, which is we use the Furman PL rack mount power strips. So PL8Cs, this one here in the middle is a PL Plus, which has the power of the equipment rack, which is a nice feature. And we like to use the lights on those for the obvious reason. It gives it a nice effect to light the racks. Super easy, you gotta have power in your equipment racks anyway. And then the other thing I wanted to go over here is we're using Pico pads here. So I'm just using a basic Pico four button. And what you can see is the top button is our lighting. The second one down, we're killing the can lights. And then we have it turn our star ceiling on and it turns all four of our Epic controllers on. The shooting star is automatic and we have it set for every 10 seconds. The third button down just turns the can lights on or the down lights to a setting more of like a cleaning mode and then our fourth is an all off button and so we have a four button here and we have a three button at the other entrance this is basically the back entrance to our theater and our office our sim racing rig and a speaker demo room so i'm going to turn these back on and give you some insight into the theater so basic halo four inch cans and then we did on the same circuit as the halo cans, we flushed in an LED strip light there. I didn't want a can to be looking out of place. And then as I walk through, and I'll turn these back on, the video show. So we have our exit sign. We have in our millwork, we Frenched in one inch LED aluminum channel. And again, we're still in and still in construction we're still working on this but we're close so those are flushed in with diffusers our cove lighting which you can't see in the star ceiling we have our cove lighting up here and what we've done on that is we have again we have a channel from Cluse, but we're using their uh, raised or their dome diffuser cover which helps dispute the light you can kind of see some of the star ceiling poking through and then as we drop down there's our perimeter lighting again are now showing, which is backlit with the LED strip. And then we have our movie poster, which is using dual LED strip that's backlit around. And then we're using a clear Opti for the front. And then we're using a diffused 40% to uh, let the light come through on the back of it. We have our step lights, which are don't have the diffusers on them. They're Frenched into the stone. And then behind this seat and behind that seat, we have some wires that were prepped a long time ago in case we wanted to add LED cup holders or anything else within the lighting control. And I'm going to step out here. And again, we're still in construction, but we're close. So here we have a Pico 3 button. And again, top button just turns our basic lighting on. And then if I hit the center button, it turns our star ceiling on, dims the other lights to 25%, and turns on our lighting feature. And then the only other thing I wanted to show you was the zoning. So what we did here with our KX7 is we have all the light features. So we have cove lighting, 
So I just turned that to blue as you see. You can see these are still in their white mode. And then I can go over to my step lighting. So see that one's now gone green. So that's a separate zone. Perimeter lighting's white. So star ceiling, we'll end up having a control in here to actually turn the star ceiling from twinkle. Uh, we can actually turn the star ceiling off from here. That's not programmed in yet. So perimeter lighting. So turn that to red. And then we did the overhead, which are our wall wash lights or our down lights. And then number six is our lighting features. So what we're able to do here is we can turn off all of our lighting and then we can turn it on individually. So movie poster, we've got the now showing sign. Actually hit the button, there it goes. And then I don't think the exit sign turned on. So we'll turn the exit sign on. It turned on. Nope. Helps if I hit the button. Then we have our exit sign. And again, star ceiling. Can lights, which are good for wall washing. Uh, they've got 5,000 K bulbs in them, which are a real, realistic color to uh, keep the fabric how it should look. That's an important feature to keep an eye out. Uh, you could always do like Lutron Ketra or something higher in, or WAC lighting has a few different things that we're looking at. Um, but these are what we had, and these have been in place for two years, so we didn't change it. And then again, you can see the perimeter lighting. It's flushed into the millwork. So that's the tour of our lighting. Uh, probably a lot of repetitive and redundant stuff, but it'll give you an idea of what you can do on one of these rooms. And hope you like the video. The next one we're going to do is on our screen wall here. And then we'll do a final walkthrough and we'll try to go over every aspect of the room once it's 100% and clean. Um, it's still We're still in construction mode. It looks clean, but it's not. It's a lot of dust and everything else that needs to be done. We still have some work on the stone. We still have some transitions. Our uh, base molding's not in. Our auto, This door is actually an automatic door. So that will shut automatically. It will not open automatically though. Alrighty, thanks again. Hey, Tyler, Theater Design Company. So gonna go over uh, the screen wall here on our demo room. We're uh, getting close on this thing. We're doing a couple videos today with some downtime and some training. So I'm uh, going to go over this quickly, and uh, this will be a short video. There's really not too much to go over. Uh, what we're looking at now is the Sapiti uh, movie slash DVD server system. Um, so we've got a 60 terabyte server, um, and we're running the uh, Pro 4K. There's a bunch of videos on this for some like Techno Dad and a bunch of the really good guys. So I'm not going to go over that at all. But what I will do is show you we're using a little Samsung tablet here. And uh, that is actually our remote control as well. But what we can do is open up the Sapiti uh, app on this Android and actually select and play movies right from here. So kind of a, a good, like a jukebox basically. Real nice way to play movies. Um, as far as the screen goes, it's a 120 inch Seymour Craftsman screen. It's the Neo 4K material. And what we do is we track these in with kinetic noise track that we buy. We can get that in kind of a an off-white color or a black color depending on the theater room we're building and uh, we basically surround this thing with a Guilford Amain onyx fabric and so that's the screen with just a basic image on it we're using a uh, an old flagship 4k Sony on it and uh, we're waiting for our Wolf cinema projector to show up so overall I'm gonna kind of set this down turn the lights on full and go through the uh, screen surround and that's really going to be it on the video. There's not too much here to, to show you. All right, so I've shut the video off. Uh, we just got a blank screen here, but I can go and show you the uh, the detail in it and uh, how we do kind of our edgeless screen. Um, we've done, I think, eight of these now, and uh, they seem to work really well with the Craftsman screen from Seymour. We use uh, Guilford Amain fabric, so we're using the Onyx fabric, and again, kinetic noise track to uh, track all this in. So, see more screen, and uh, 
that's our edge reveal all the way around and again this is acoustically transparent screen so we have the Klipsch BTS system behind here which is uh, five individual speaker boxes there's not much more I can show you on this I mean it's it kind of speaks for itself how the screen edges in there's there's no surround it's part of the wall it gives it a nice kind of a modern clean look and then just as a quick overview this is our Guilford Main fabric wall um, so again we're using their fabric kinetic noise track we've tracked it in with the design and uh, one thing I will show because it was a fair amount of work is we actually built this door in the back and the lines follow the fabric around and there's the projector we're using as kind of a demo uh, projector for now but you can see the lines all follow so they follow into the black they zip around this is our notch in there we're redoing that door again main reason the video is here is for the Seymour screen and probably one more video and then we'll do a final walkthrough of all this with it nice and clean and we got some throw blankets coming in we got a couple other things these chairs we picked up so overall it turned out pretty good we're pretty happy with the progress on it thanks for watching and uh subscribe and we'll go from there thanks a lot hey this is tyler theater design company gonna do a, a video today on our remote control system that runs our demo room um, we generally use uh, RTI control systems for all of our jobs. Uh, what's nice about that is we can buy one of their XP series processors if the customer uh, has good Wi-Fi and an Apple uh, you know, Air, Apple Mini 5, we can add a tablet app and they're off to the races. Uh, fairly simple and uh, inexpensive way to get a, a solid remote control. So what I'm showing you here is our Apple Air. Um, it's got an OtterBox case. Um, and then it's got a stand that we've picked up off Amazon and as you can see this is our splash screen and then what we've done here is uh, I've just taken screenshots of our programming and what you'll do here is you'll hit the start button and that will put you into our home page and I'm going to explain a little bit about this there's a couple different features here that you're not going to see because I don't have a real-time video of the remote control the volume here actually tracks the volume of our audio control in real time as well as the check marks so if I select Apple TV the check mark will stay on that these four check marks will go away the weather here is live real time and then as we go through you'll see a few other features the main thing on this remote is this uh, screen uh, is an RTSP video feed that can pull the video from our system so we can do previews of Apple TV Zipidi and so on and I uh, don't have to go into our control room So that's that page. So if we were to click a source we'll Go in here. So it's blu-ray You see our aspect ratios. So 4 by 3 IMAX so on This is prepping for our motorized masking screen and then we have all our surround modes which are currently running uh, We're obviously not in Minneapolis, Minnesota This would actually say where we're at because again, this is a variable feedback with text same with the clock and the timing and then again it we can actually add variable tabs so if we're hitting play and our IP device tells uh, our system it's playing we could even have a little green light here and this green light is showing that our device is on it'll go red when it's off let me do another page here so Apple TV and then we've got our cable TV it's Xfinity a couple of favorite channels put in and again on the left we have our aspect ratio and surround modes for easy access we have our media server so we got the Zipidi logo here and it's got an Explorer when you hit the Explorer or the keypad button it will pop up a keyboard and then we have our RTI music so this will do uh, variable feedback as well as well as cover art so again that's not what we're playing that's just the text that's in there and when we select our song it gives you song artist album music service and it pulls from our RTI music server and gives you those real-time feedback and then our lighting control which is overly complex but since it's a demo room it's nice to be able to come in here and control that 
What we do have here though is our scene button. So these are all programmed exactly how we want them. Uh, so if we hit white, it'll do our dimming levels. It'll set all the lights exactly where we want. We can turn the uh, star ceiling to twinkle or shooting. We can turn our lighted movie poster on or off, our exit sign on or off, now showing on or off. And then these are our four main RGB lighting zones, um, one being a common. And then wall washer, um, we have our lobby, which is behind our theater. And uh, every once in a while, that door will open, so we can turn that on or off. Same with the bar, which is on the inside of our theater. And then these are actually powering on our RGB lighting controllers. So we can actually, the top one here is set to turn the star ceiling and the cove on only. And then our bottom one turns our stairs, poster, exit, now showing a perimeter on. So it's a, a simple way for us to get a little more control. And then last, we've got uh, some future stuff we're working on. So we're actually gonna put a temperature and immunity control system in the whole entire demo room and basement. And then we have our theater settings. So if we ever add a scaler, our projector settings, so we can go HDMI one or two. And again, these read false because we're doing IP with variable feedback. If we're on HDMI one, this will say true and this will say false. We can also make it so that these icons change, just change color. So we could do uh, green or red. I actually like it to say uh, true or false, or we could change that text to on or off. And then on our audio processor, same thing. Um, this tells us our source. This tells us our surround sound format. And then again, on all of these, we can do on screen and uh, get into our menu, um, our navigation pads and so on. And then again, the green lights indicate whether the device is on or off. And then last page, uh, second to last page, weather. So this is uh, again, real time. Uh, pulling from the weather again. We're not in Minneapolis and Then this is our system off page So we can hit the power off and it'll go to this page to confirm that we want to turn the system off Or we can just hit green and go back to our home page All right, so that's a quick overview of our uh, RTI remote control using their uh, tablet app and an Apple uh, air uh, it's a very effective remote control. Um, we're happy to give you a quote on one of those. You can see it obviously in person in our demo room. Um, and we do you know, a fair amount of those, so highly recommended uh, device. Uh, super simple to uh, get a system up and running and programmed. Uh, the other thing I wanted to go over is just a few of the other things that we, we do on we calibrate a system. So as you'll see on this screenshot, we, uh, we have our remote control fired up, of course, but we have a uh, audio control RTA we have our laptop open and we do two things on our larger high-end systems uh, and most most uh, integrators will do this is we uh, calibrate the speakers so that all the speakers are the same levels um, and we actually try to do this before we run any Odyssey or Dirac or any of those uh, it, it speeds it up and just helps it out and it's how it should be properly done because um, you don't really want to set the gains in your processor you want to get your levels set uh, via the gains on the amplifiers uh, first. So in our case, we're running the RS-1000s, which we can just IP into to set our levels, but our uh, Avalons and G4s and so on um, amplifiers have physical gain adjustments on the back of them. So we go through and set those using the, uh, D the DMRTA, and then we set that um, system up. In this case, we're using audio control, which has Dirac Live built into it, to uh, configure the system. So you can kind of see we have our, our laptop and then we have our microphones that we uh, adjust around the room using the Dirac Live. And the second thing we talk about is uh, just basic video calibration. So on any of our higher end jobs um, at a, a relatively small fee, we, uh, we do some light calibration for the customer. And the reason I say light calibration is we sub our contract uh, for any video calibration out to a gentleman up here in the Northwest. He's a uh, nationwide uh, projection uh, calibration. I, I believe he does audio as well. And uh, he's one of the best there is. Uh, we've had rave reviews from any customer he's been out to. Um, so that being said, we'll, uh, we'll put the Spears and Munsell uh, calibration disc in and do a light calibration on the customer system. So they're obviously up and running, able to watch video. We did the same thing here in our demo room because we plan to have Chris out to uh, tune our projector after the first of the year. Uh, and then we'll probably have to have him out again once we put the motorized masking system in. 
Um, so that's it for this video. Uh, three more cool videos up on this uh, demo. Hey, Tyler, Theater Design Company. So doing a quick video for a customer, just kind of show them what we do. Um, and I decided just to turn it into kind of our, our final YouTube video on our demo room. As you know, nothing's ever complete, especially when you're in the industry, but this one sitting in our room is about 95%. And the images that you see scrolling through right now are these are the renderings that we built when this room was uh, just basically a cement shell. So we'll see how close, if you can take a look at these, make a mental note and see how close we got to finishing this room per what we did the rendering. And uh, again, I just made this video for a couple customers to send it out to them for some jobs we're working on. Uh, but it gives you a good idea what we do, what we can do. And I hope you like it and happy holidays. Hey, this is Tyler, Theater Design Company. I'm going to do a long overdue complete tour of our demo space um, in terms of the home theater. Um, we've done demo, uh, demos of this room here, so this is the uh, our dedicated bar space. Um, so we've got a ton of architectural stone, um, full bar, not 100% cleaned up. we got sim racing rig. Um, obviously I'm a car guy, so you got a bunch of car memorabilia. Got the door there that's secret going to the theater. So keep it uh, subscribed because that's going to be a complete new door, be a sliding door going into there um, with a proximity sensor. It should be actually really cool. And then this side of it will be wood cased with model cars. The other side is going to have like a hexagon fabric panel. And again, it's going to slide back into that wall there. Um, you've seen there's got some other videos. I'll link it below, but you got our bar here. So custom built door, it still needs to be glazed and we still need to stain the trim around. Um, being that we're professional installers, sales, everything, we don't get out to do too much work on our own stuff, but we try to. Some cars out there, so that's the shop area. And then that goes upstairs into the main house. Um, the entrance is all lowered in this house, so when we bring people over, they don't even see the main part of my home. They just go down into our demo space, and then we have another side door um, off the shop and come in so kind of a neat little private space that we actually get to use as well um, so getting into some of the technology um, I won't go over too much of this room this is a RTI zone in here it's got four clip speakers uh, one clip sub got a KX10 remote um, so that's their touch screen we got a four button Pico and then again we've got the door so we'll jump into the theater here so again door we built we're not finished with it because we kind of change directions with the new sliding door we're putting in but as you can see I'll step back I'm gonna give you an overview of what people look at when they come in so again tile floors I get some grief for that but there's no choice here it's a working shop on the left side of the home and a kind of a mechanic shop on the right hand side of the home so carpets just doesn't fly and we have plenty of acoustical panels got the whole star ceiling that's acoustic every wall is acoustically treated you got the chairs it sounds perfectly fine a um, couple things we built here, so we got a flushed in uh, lighting system there. So that's that light is a linear light that's flushed in. We built the no now showing sign. We built the uh, backlit movie poster, and so we got two things we're doing here as far as an update goes. This door is changing uh, to a slider. It's going to slide mechanism back into there from auto slide, and I believe the now showing poster is probably going to go to a digital movie poster. And we're going to actually put that around a hexagon panel and have the whole thing hinged out because there's actually a fair amount of room behind there for storage, uh, empty boxes, and then our cable tray runs through there and some of the back of our racks and so on. So we need to be able to access that. Uh, jumping into here, we've got Epic Sky lights. So these are uh, all flushed into the trim. Uh, this is a mixture of Epic Sky controllers and American Lighting Spectrum um, RGB strip, which is what we spec into jobs. And so seven zones of lighting, perimeter, stairs, cove, linear light, can lights, the star ceiling, and then you've got 
lights behind the screen, which we don't ever run because it just doesn't look right. With the Seymour screen, it doesn't let enough light through. So I'm going to jump back into the room and shut the door, do a quick walkthrough. So it's all kinetic noise. It's uh, TAD panels. Uh, the back wall's got a stealth diffusers in it. It's a uh, Guilford Amain fabric, kinetic noise track. Again, you know, some grief for that, but we've got the uh, architectural stone columns. They work well for diffusion um, and they match the rest of the house. So aesthetics sometimes come into play more than form or function. Um, star ceiling. Should see a shooting star here any second. There you go. And then again, our now showing our linear right lights. And uh, that pops out for service right now. And then we've got our door, which we never finished. And a little bit of our left screen wall we didn't finish because we're probably going to change a couple things on the screen. The rest of the room is relatively complete. So those lights are flushed into the tile. And then I'll start naming off the speakers and... Uh, this video will be fairly long because I have a couple videos I'm going to interject with it that show you kind of the speaker layout, um, where they're placed, and kind of what we're using for as far as the clips goes. Again, stair lights here, fortress seating. So those are just some octane seats, but uh, we've known a couple different seats. So we're looking at a few other manufacturers of seats for the center row. Uh, table, some pretty neat chairs with hexagon. Uh, another door back here that's got some flush hinges on a spring. Uh, we put the push button in. You can see that we've lined up the door trim. Uh, we built the door, lined up the door trim with the same seam as the fabric. So we've got our lighted exit sign. Uh, another upcoming video is we're taking out the can lights. So all the can lights are going to be American Lighting Spectrum lights. So that'll be RGBW with full color spectrum. Um, right now you're looking at 5,000 K bulbs to get the correct color temperature on the fabric. So you can actually see that it's a gray fabric. And then a couple other updates that we'll be doing on the room itself. It's probably going to go to 115 inch 235 screen. Right now you're looking at 120 inch 60 by 9. And we're probably going to split that wall or at least do about a foot and a half in of a black hexagon. Um, kind of a feature that'll kind of turn out at the bottom and uh, that's we get we're getting a little bit of light wash onto the gray but again some of this is for aesthetics and some of this is for demo so it's not a hundred percent blacked out room for perfect image and perfect you know things like that it's we like the form and function aspect of things too star ceiling is uh, two star kits from epic sky and then one shooting star kit again cove light all of our cove light jobs we do 90% of them will try to put diffusion on the top of it. So we'll put it in a aluminum channel and we'll put the cover over it. That gives you the good light output that you're seeing. Same with the perimeter lighting, the stair lighting, same with the linear lighting and the ceiling that's flushed into the drywall. So make sure you do your research on the cover and make sure you do your research on your color temperature. It's all super important. Um, we can control this. Well, let me jump back into this. So We've got our uh, JVC NZ7 there flushed in. We've done this on a few jobs where we use a smoked plexiglass panel, but it does still have an opening cut out, so we're not using an optic glass, but it gives it a nice clean kind of a theater look to it. We've got our rear surrounds that had to go up here because obviously we have the doors. So let's try to pull one of these off real quick without dropping it. So those are the flagship Klipsch in ceilings. So the RP, RP180, LCRs and if you kind of were to look down you can see the angles coming right into our listening area so you'd be hard-pressed to find a speaker from here to here if you can hear that difference you've uh, you're doing a better job than I am so you'll probably get some flack from the super enthusiast guys but that is what it is you'd be hard-pressed to tell the difference between two feet of sound between having it in the correct location back here or up in the ceiling and again these are low ceilings anyway in the back with full height ceilings in the front. Can't forget Dr. Evil down there. So it's a Seymour Neo 4K screen. And then I doubt I can do a demo on it, but I can at least run through the touchscreen. So RTI, we're doing their touchscreen panels. We're doing uh, sources of this room. This room has an Apple TV, a Sony X800 4K player, and Kaleidoscape. It's using this Kaleidoscape Strato and then a server. And so we can get in here and hit, uh, see, we'll hit play on that. So, and then we would jump over to here, jump our lighting off. 
then all our lights turn off. So back light's still on, but doubt this camera can pick up the uh, image anyway. But here you got some Dolby Atmos demo disc, which is one of the common ones we play. The NZ7 has a great image quality to it. It's not a flagship projector, but it's right up there with some of the best. So, tons of bass. This room has a bunch of, uh, a lot of output as far as that goes. I'll pop this back open. The other thing nice about the uh, Kaleidoscape that we're doing now for demos is that it's how fast it works. So we can jump in here and if, say we want to hit menu, we can go down to our covers. And so you can see it's nearly, nearly instantaneous to pull up whatever movie we want. Um, we've had a Zipedi in here. We've had a few others. We've done Windows Media Servers with my movies. All of those, there's nothing faster than this. There's nothing better image quality. You pay for it, but it is the best. So pretty neat. Um, about four or 500 movies on here, or maybe 100 that are 4K HDR, another few hundred that are HD and Blu-ray. Um, and I'll go into that a little bit too. So let me jump back out here. So this is kind of what we call our lobby space. Again, I'm car guys, so we got some car racks. We've got speaker stands for demo, not speakers in that other room. Um, again, I'll kind of just peek in there, but that room's not really ready to show, but it's kind of where we demo some of our Lutron lighting. Clips professional speakers, that's what's running in there. Some demo speakers here, some trade-in speakers. And then uh, I'll show this. So this is the intake for our hush box. And so we use this dual purpose, storing some remotes, some movies, but you can see we've got a four inch inlet. And then that jumps over. It's the back of the NZ7. That thing's rising on, it's got kinetic noise dampers on there. Those are actually from their floating floors, but they work really well to dampen the projector. And then we've got another AC Infinity fan here. We're sitting about 82 degrees and this is running for three or four hours. So we're well within temperature of the JVC. You see the probes up here at its highest point. And then networked cabled in, SSF clear line. So we got one HDMI two in for the Kaleidoscape Direct. And then we got one coming from the audio control. So that gives us a direct HDMI feed uh, and video feed in from the Kaleidoscape. And then the Kaleidoscape has an HDMI audio out that runs in for its audio portion. A little lighting controller. Wire's relatively clean, it's not perfect. And nice clean look. And then again, back of the door. So that's flushed in, some more Lutron lighting. Barn door that kind of covers this up, usually not shut. And then into the stuff that you guys want to see. So I'll go through each rack real quick. Um, let's start with these. So these are wire path panels. So first panel here is doing some epic links. So that's our 232 stuff. That's running the star ceiling and controlling the RGB lighting. And then we're running uh, RAW 2 here. Um, ironically, this house has Homeworks RAW 2 and RAW 3 because I'm in the business. So that's what we're running. Um, but the theater itself is running RAW 2 with the main repeater. Homeworks for the office. And then RAW 3 is what's mostly upstairs. It's movie poster signs. Uh, those are the ones you get off Etsy. They're pretty cool. And then these are all the Epic Sky RGB lighting. So we put these into another wire path enclosure. So four of those. The bottom advanced controller is actually split into three. So we're using one output for the now showing, one for the exit sign and then one for the back movie poster sign. The other three are the full RGB uh, W for the perimeter cove and stair lights. And then that goes into our shop. Uh, we've got a Nest, new Aero POE6 for internet. We've kind of ditched the ubiquity thing. Um, got these uh, kind of turnstile things for candy, which are just awesome. Highly recommend them if you have the space for them. Little table to put stuff on. And then jumping into the stuff when everybody wants to see. So try to go slow on this as I can so people can see what's about. But basically we've got a ton of Panamax Furman in here. Um, I'll start with the power first. So the room itself has a 20 amp dedicated for the theater, 20 amp dedicated for the network, and an additional 20 amp dedicated for the whole house audio. So you're looking at about 60 amps of power. Um, the theater itself is running into the Furman IT reference. 
the firmament above it is specifically, we're using that device specifically to do the 12 volt trigger. And uh, I'll inject a video on that, on how those things turn on and off. Cause it's pretty cool how they, the light, they just light on and off is a pretty neat effect. And then across the top, we have all the firmans. So these are the PL8Cs. Everything is in uh, strong and mid-Atlantic equipment racks with A-faces, um, custom face plates. And then on the left, full left rack, we start with the Furman. We've got an Atlona 4K video uh, switcher. So that runs out to a few of the other TVs in the house and bar and garage. Um, 32 channel camera, server, uh, AC Affinity fan that actually controls the fans that are in each rack. And then those uh, suck out of this room to the outside with a six inch fan. Some Arachnus switches, um, those are all wired in with fiber. Uh, I think we got a 16 port, eight port PoE for the RTI, another eight port for the theater. Uh, we got a Panamax, um, sequential. So that's their pro, one of their, we got one of their pro 20s, one of their pro 15 amps, battery backup for the cameras and network. Uh, on the very bottom, Kaleidoscape M700. That's what does the uh, movie server. Um, what we're using that mainly is for category, uh, cataloging the disc so we can drop discs in there. Kaleidoscape picks them up. And then if we want to do disc to digital, they show that we own that, save a few bucks each disc. Um, plus we get to see some of our legacy movies, which is nice. Um, so again, far left rack is mainly uh, network security, some video switching. Uh, center rack, again, another Furman. And then we have an RTI XP8S that's running the demo space. And then we have an RTI XP8V. That the only difference is they're both control processors. The V is video out, so the video out goes into the HDMI switcher and we'll end up having a kind of a page on it to alert us of uh, doors opening, close, HVAC temps, kind of a neat uh, house system that we're putting in with that. Um, it's not 100%, it's probably about 80% done. Uh, RTI zone controller for the audio. Um, we're not using any of the internal amps, those are all below. RTI MS3 uh, for the music and then an old RTI uh, kind of just a rack mount thing that we have a couple things in some legacy devices. Uh, one theater device in there which is the the Sony M8000 uh, or excuse me 800. So that's our 4K player for the theater. And then TD, TDG Audio and Vanguard same company. So that's all our house audio and then again another sequential switcher from Panamax to uh, turn everything on off correctly. And then we've got our theater rack. So again, another Furman. And again, the Furmans have lights. It's pretty neat when they're off. You can turn them on. And then if I end up turning the lights off in here at night, each one of those can light up across. Uh, it's a pretty neat effect. Be cool if they were LED or RGB, but I think what they do is pretty neat. So again, we can run those out at night just to see stuff if we have our lights off. You want to change a disc or something. It's kind of a neat feature. And they're slide in. So jumping back to that, we've got the Kaleidoscape Terra. We've got the Kaleidoscape uh, Strato for our, music, our movie player. Uh, running the audio control Maestro X7. And then speaker system amplifiers for the theater. So RS-1000 for the left sub, RS-1000 for the right sub. The Avalon G60 is uh, the top one here is bridged for the left and right. So about 600 watts per speaker. The one below it, the left side of that amp is bridged for the center, and then the right side does our front wides. And then jumping down to the third Avalon, that does the sides and rears. And then the bottom Avalon is doing the uh, four Atmos speakers, and the bottom RS500 uh, is doing uh, two triad 12-inch, uh, the porthole subs. And then again, the Furman for power sequencing. And really nothing else to see in here. Um, couple notes here I think I mentioned the HDMI cabling is all SSF clear line so it's all 8k 48 gigabit cabling direct and this whole rack here is all wired with Kimber so the whole entire equipment rack is uh, Kimber cable um, there should be a couple videos of that or a picture of that built um, everything else in the rack is just our typical structured cable product and wire path product from our vendors and then I think that's about all I could show you guys there as far as updates go on equipment, uh, nothing really new that we're putting in here. We got the Kaleidoscape. We'll probably put another storage server or two in for movies. Um, and then the updates on this is probably going to go to a 235 screen, which we'll do a video showing that. Um, 
at the end of this, I'm going to inject a couple of videos just showing cool things on the room. So uh, I've got a video on the speaker layout that we've shown a couple of customers just because everything's hidden, kind of show where they're at. And then I'll do one of the amplifiers turning on and off. And then new videos for the YouTube channel will be, the big one will be a sliding door for that and reworking that whole corner. And then the 235 screen. Um, and then we're probably going to do, like I said, digital movie poster. Um, no real sound upgrades, uh, acoustical upgrades, just some tweaks and doing those last little bit of finishing touches. But it's hard when you're out in the field doing customers' jobs and then coming home and doing yours. You don't really want to do it. Um, other than that, uh, I think that'll end this video as far as me talking. And then I'll do a couple of the speaker explainers. And I uh, hope you like it. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.